Hey, what's up everybody? This is Pastor JC coming at you on this Tuesday after Labor Day. And it's Tuesday, but it is the Mondayest Tuesday ever. Maybe you're slow in starting this morning. Maybe you're having a difficult time getting the, the fog out of your brain if you had a long weekend. But uh, I hope that you are blessed today. I hope that the Lord is ministering to your heart and your spirit and just know that this pastor loves you and I'm praying for you. I want to share for just a few moments on a topic that is many times controversial and uh, you know in the in the, I was adding it up and I've been licensed as a minister in the Church of God for 37 38 years now and some of those I was in Bible college, some of those I was youth pastoring, and 23 of those I have now been the pastor at Crossroads. And over all those years, this is a topic that I've engaged in conversation with many people numerous times over the years. And some of the times, you know, it's been positive and uplifting. And some of the times it's been negative and destructive. And it's one of those topics that people have their very strong opinions about and very strong perspectives about. And I don't ever approach it as though one person is right and one person is wrong. But I have, I have seen this very issue bring so much division and disunity into the body of Christ. And I think that one of the things that is important is growth in all of us. As a pastor, it's important for me to disciple those over whom I am their shepherd. It's important for me to disciple them and grow them and mature them. And and so let's just get into this. And the, the, mus the, the topic is music. Many times people have very strong perspectives and ideas about music, what they like, what they don't like what we should sing at church, what we shouldn't sing at church, and, and all of those things. But, you know, through the years, I've come to understand some things about music. And music should be a thing that brings the body of Christ together, especially during those times when we're in church together and we go into what we call our praise and, praise and worship set, and we're singing together, we're worshiping together. This should be a time when we are all drawn together in unity. In Psalm chapter 96, the word of God says this, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations and his marvelous deeds among the people. For great is the Lord and most worthy to be praised. In this passage of scripture, the psalmist challenges us three different times. He says the word sing. One of those times he says, sing to the Lord a new song. And then two of those times he simply says, sing. Sing praise to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Singing and music is one of those things in our lives that many times stirs up emotions. Music and songs can cause us to flash back to a specific moment in our life. Have you ever had those times when you, you've you heard a song or you've heard just the first notes of a song and it took you back to your childhood or you took you back to your teenage years or it took you back to your wedding. Maybe that song was played at your wedding and all of a sudden you begin to reminisce. Music and singing is a powerful tool and it's an effective tool that can either, either lead us into the presence of God or can emotional, emotionally remove us from the presence of God. And so one of the things that I've come to understand over the years about music is that whether it's old music, whether it's hymns or traditional music, or it's newer music, the Lord can use this music to move in the body of Christ. Let me tell you something. Sometimes when I'm working out or I'm, I'm listening to music, sometimes only the oldies will do for me. I love the music from the 70s and 80s and the 1970s and 80s and even the 60s. I, I love that music and sometimes only that will do for me. But there's other times when I want to hear some new stuff. I want to hear some fresh stuff. And it's interesting to me because in the body of Christ, 
we all have our mindset, we all have our perspectives and those things that we like and don't like. And I've learned over the years that there is, there is power and there is anointing in the hymns, in the traditional music of the church, in those old staple songs of the church. And I love them. Listen, there are some songs when I'm in my personal time with God, when I'm in my private time with God, and I'll begin to sing songs like Amazing Grace, or I begin to sing songs like I'll Fly Away or, or whatever. And man, it's so powerful. And the Spirit of God leads me into His presence. And then there's other times when I'm in the presence of God and I'm led to newer things. Like I'll begin to sing songs like The Goodness of God. Or I'll begin to sing songs like Graves into Gardens. And, and I just moved into the presence of God. See, what I've discovered is, over the years is that the same Holy Spirit who anointed writers like John Newton to write Amazing Grace, the same Holy Spirit who inspired writers to sing song, to write and sing songs like What Can Wash Away My Sins, Nothing But the Blood of Jesus, He's the same Holy Spirit that is anointing individuals today to write new songs such as Chain Breaker, and songs as such as goodness of God, and I will sing of the goodness of God. He's the same Holy Spirit. And so what, I've, what I understand and what I've learned is that I can worship the Lord no matter what the music is, because it's not about the song, it's about the Savior whom I'm worshiping. It can be, there is power in the blood of Jesus, or it can be gratitude. Whatever song it is, it doesn't matter. I'm going to worship the Lord with everything in me because I, I am focused on Him, not the style of music, not the song, not my preference. See, many times we approach praise and worship with our own preference, and we never get into the mind of God to understand we're coming before the throne of God. And there are times where the psalmist said, sing to the Lord a new song. And there are times when he simply says, sing to the Lord, praise his name. It encompasses the old stuff and the new stuff. And as I was thinking about this, you know, I was in a conversation with somebody uh, this past weekend about music. And I thought about this and I thought, you know, the word of God talks about trying to put new wine into old wineskins. And if you do that, the wineskin is going to burst because it can't handle the new wine because of the frailty and the, the, the brittleness, the brittleness of it. It can't handle the new wine as the new wine expands and grows inside as it ferments. And, and I got to thinking about, you know, when we change our perspective and we wrap ourselves in a new wine skin as we approach music, and we wrap ourselves in the approach of the Holy Spirit is still inspiring musicians and songwriters to write under a heavy anointing. That new wineskin can not only accommodate the new songs, but it can accommodate the old songs because you can put the old songs and the new songs in the new wineskin without fear of it breaking it, bursting it, destroying it in any way. So I'm so thankful to God for all of the old hymns and the old songs that I grew up on. And, and I actually just posted a post about if you were raised in the 1970s in the church or church camp, you understand this. And it was just a whole bunch of letters. And those letters were the first letters in the statement, I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. And specifically in the Church of God and in Pentecostal churches, that song went over and over and over and over and over again in the 1970s and 80s. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. And, and those old songs are still relevant for us today as they were for the, the generation back then when they were written. And the new songs that are being written today, they're just as relevant for us and for future generations. So as, as a pastor, I'm thankful that at Crossroads, we are working to incorporate both the old and the new in the wine, new wineskin of, we've just come to praise God. We've just come to worship Him. And no matter what that looks like or how that plays out, we've just come to worship Him. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. And so I want to challenge you. I want you to comment on this video 
And in, the, in your comment, I want you to tell me what's your favorite older song, your favorite hymn or traditional song from the past that you love and is just a, an amazing song for you. And I want you to comment what is your favorite new song that has just come out or, or has just been out for a few years. What are you loving? What music inspires you and motivates you to worship the Lord with everything that's in you? I'll go, I'll go first. I'll start it here by saying it and then I'll also post it in the comments. One of my favorite, well, I have a couple of favorite old traditional hymns. One of those is The Old Rugged Cross. It just holds such a powerful message for me when I begin to sing, so I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Another one of my old favorite hymns is the old high church hymn called Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Early in the morning, my song will rise to thee. Some of my favorites. What are some of my favorite new songs? I love the song, Goodness of God. It's powerful. It speaks about the faithfulness of God. I love this. So one of the new songs that we sing at Crossroads called Gratitude. It's incredible. I thank you, Lord. I'm so grateful for all that you've done. So today, as you begin to grow in this aspect of how do I worship the Lord and and how am I going to worship the Lord when I come together with the body of Christ? I think if the church would get past the mentality of if they don't sing the songs I want, then I'm, I'm done. And instead, tap into, I'm coming into the presence of God with my church family and the body of Christ. So whether we sing something from 150 years ago or we sing something that was written yesterday, it doesn't matter to me because it's not about the song. It's about coming into the presence of the Lord and worshiping God. I love you today. I'm praying for you. May God bless you and keep you. Take care of yourselves.